Hello, and welcome to this session of Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week. I'm Mina al Arabi, editor in chief of the National here in Abu Dhabi. In today's session, we're looking at getting to net zero in finance. With more banks and businesses setting ambitious net zero goals in the run up to COP26, how do they balance sustainability and prosperity? And how do you get there during a pandemic? With me to discuss these issues and more is Noel Quinn, Group Chief Executive of HSBC Bank. Mr. Quinn, thank you for being with me today. Thank you, Maynard, and it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. So the reason we're having this conversation rather than in person, but virtually, of course, is because of COVID-19 and the pandemic that has overtaken much of the world. As businesses start to reorient themselves post COVID-19 and adjust to the world we live in, how do we ensure that the future is sustainable? That's a great question. And I think COVID has been such a shock, to, not only to the health system of the world, but to the economic system as well. And I think we've all learned many lessons over the past 12, 18 months. And I think we've got to take those lessons forward. Um, first, I think we've all learned how we can do business in a different way. And that will lead to changes in industries, in certain industry segments. I don't think the past will come back for certain industries quite the way it was um, going forward. Um, I also believe that it's been a wake up call to us all, uh, how fragile the economic system is to a health shock. And I believe that a climate shock could be even more damaging to the economic system. And we all hope that COVID can return to some sort of normality post COVID. But the world may not be able to recover quite as quick after a climate shock. And that's why I think we've really got to double down on our efforts towards net zero and look at ways that we can transform industry segments. Te technology can transform the way we do business. And I think we've learned many of those stories in the time of COVID, where technology has been our savior. It's interesting you say that because you're right, everyone's had to adapt. But at the same time, there are fears that memories can be short. And if hopefully with vaccinations, with certain changes in a year, in 18 months, things feel a bit more normal. How do you avoid businesses going back to the old way of doing things? Well, I think it's our responsibility as leaders and opinion formers, whether we're leaders in business or leaders in government, to actually make sure we don't forget the stories of the past 12, 18 months, that we realize how fragile world health is, the world environment is, and therefore economics is very fragile. So I think we have an obligation as leaders to make sure we don't forget the messages and the learnings of the last 12 months. Um, but I also think that transformation is already starting to take place. There are certain industry segments that will not return to normality as it was. They are changing permanently. Uh, I believe there are what we've seen over the past 12 months will prompt the certain industry segments to, to, to take advantage of new technologies that are on the horizon and to accelerate their use. Um, I don't believe there's a way of going back. I think we have to look forward. Now, as you said, I mean, being climate resilient is, is equally important as any of the other resiliencies that we need to go forward. Um, but we're going through economic difficulties in the world and the COVID-19 pandemic has also led to different businesses facing different difficulties and challenges. So where does the financing come and when does the long term investment come in this more sustainable future? That's a great point, and there's a huge amount of financing needed to finance new infrastructure, new technologies, to invest in new business models that will undoubtedly emerge. Uh, industries will find a new way of doing business, whether it's in the energy sector, it's in the transportation sector, manufacturing. Um, supply chains will change. Um, it's going to come. And I don't think there's one single source of financing that can meet all of that demand. It requires public sector and private sector to work together. It requires equity and debt. It requires long-term capital and short-term capital. Um, and I think that's where we as the financial institution have to play our part. Uh, and that's why we've announced recently, as part of our commitment to net zero, we anticipate over the next 10 years, 
that we will be financing through our balance sheet in some form or another, somewhere between 750 billion and a trillion of additional lending or financing activity, either on our own balance sheet or through capital market activity over the next 10 years. But that has to be alongside, I suspect, government financing to support infrastructure, long-term infrastructure and equity financing as well. And I think the, um, the investment sector has an important role to play. Insurance companies, pension funds that are looking for long-term assets um, can be important providers of finance to long-term infrastructure that will be required to be put in place. That long-termism that you refer to, uh, it's its one of the, the big challenges for people yeah. to think long-term, especially as people want to see quarter results. There's been a lot of conversation about that, at least in the past decade. So how do you get that long-term thinking? And also, how do shareholders accept that there are certain things that will take a long-term for returns to come? You know, I, I, I get a strong feeling from the investor base I talk to and the shareholders I talk to that they're looking for institutions such as HSBC to take that long-term view. I think they see both the opportunity and the risks of us not being involved in the sustainability sector and the building of the future. Um, so I don't. I think the investor base is there and I think they're willing to be long-term investors in what is good for um, the world will be good for the economies of the world. Um, but also, you know, I look at this not as just the right thing to do from an environmental point of view, but I look at it as the right thing to do from a commercial opportunity. Um, HSBC has been in existence for 155 years. We have witnessed many, many changes in the industrial and commercial landscape in that 155 years. We've witnessed economic transformation of significant magnitude. And I believe that the next 10 to 20 years, we will see that next industrial, commercial, economic revolution take place. So I view this very much as an opportunity for HSBC to look at new emerging business models, new emerging technologies, and for those technologies to be with us for the next 20, 30, 40 years. And that's where the future of the world will lie and I think we as a financial institution, and I would say many others, need to grasp those opportunities, not see them as problems, but see them as opportunities. And if you do that, then I think investment will follow. It's a great note um, as we come to the conclusion of our conversation. I want to ask you one final question on a personal note and as a leader. What's been your biggest learning in this journey, both overcoming COVID-19, but also looking towards a sustainable future? Uh, the power of people. Um, i got to say that what our colleagues and, you know, in HSBC, but also in many other businesses and the health sector, but, you know, I can speak for HSBC, 235,000 colleagues have achieved over the past 12 months what none of us thought we could have achieved in days, not weeks or months. You know, to turn an organization this large in 60 countries around the world to be 90 to 95% working from home, um, their support for customers, their support for their fellow their colleagues, um, it's the power of people supported by the power of technology, the capabilities of technology, committed individuals, with the determination by through challenges, supported by good technology, anything's achievable. Thank you so much. Thank you for your insights, Mr. Quinn. That's the end of our session, but definitely not the end of the conversation as Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week continues, and I'm sure we'll speak again. Thank you. Thank you, Mina, and I wish you all the best for your sustainability conference.